guys, it's your host, Monica Singer, and welcome back to my show, I Am Becoming by Monica Singer. Uh, today we have a very special guest, celebrity trainer Mario Guevara. What's up, Mo? Uh, hi, I want to thank you for doing this thank for me. Thank you for having um, me. Mario's a longtime friend and amazing trainer who he personally trained me for a long time. Um, and has now become a very well-known celebrity trainer in Los Angeles. Thank you for um, having me today. Yeah, of course. Now, I want to, um, you know, I, so for those of you that are watching for the first time, I want you guys, um, uh, what you guys are going to get out of this really is just, it's really, my podcast is really for motivation and inspiration and really just to learn, learn from others' experiences and um, to learn, you know, from our peers, really, um, so, and then for those of you that have been listening, you've heard a couple of my past interviews. Um, they're really fun and, and, you know, stay tuned. We have a lot more coming. Um, but I'll jump into Mario Guevara again. Thanks um, for coming and being my guest. Um, so I want to start from the beginning. Um, just kind of, you know, who are you? Where are you from? And... Well, like you already know, my name is Mario Guevara. Yeah. I grew up in uh, South Central Los Angeles, actually really close to here, about 40th and Hoover, mm -hmm. about five minutes away. Um, so yeah, I mean, I grew up with, you know, my parents have no high school education. I grew up pretty poor. Um, and as you know, growing up in South Central is not an easy thing. Yeah, yeah. So. Mario actually grew up uh, with my husband. Yeah. So he's, they are he's like my brother. Yeah, you know. they're they're family. Shout out Lester. <laughs> <laughs> Lester Singer. Um, so you know they both grew up in the same neighborhood. You guys were neighbors, yeah, right? Yeah. You guys yeah. were neighbors. Um, His parents took care of me. My parents took care. Yeah, of Yeah, they're yeah. they're family. Um, so it's really cool seeing how both of them have evolved. Um, they're they're both entrepreneurial. <clears throat> you guys just you know yeah, your we, whole little group like our whole life was like very competitive in yeah. a fun way. You know yeah. you know how that goes. Right. And we've always pushed each other right. to do better. And you guys have always helped each other. Yeah. You know you guys have um, between you and Lester and his brother. Oscar. You guys have all been at highs and lows at different type times yes. of your lives. Very so true. it's really cool that, you know, now all of you guys are like at your peak, you guys are doing amazing and you guys have like been there the whole step of the way. Yeah. So I think that's really cool. And then also you're, okay, this is, this is actually really interesting. I am from the Inland Empire and when I was in um, high school, like all of my friends were, most of my friends were like white or Mexican, right? I had one friend and she was half Mexican and half Guatemalan mm -hmm. and to me it was like oh you know she's Mexican like I don't you know half Guatemalan she's Hispanic so then I come out to LA and I meet Lester and their entire little group of friends and family like you guys are all Guatemalan yeah <laughs> it's so crazy I had never Last met one. I had never met so many Guatemalans um, I think it's really I'm half I got Guatemalan and Salvadorian oh okay yeah. oh Salvadorian. Salvadorian okay I didn't My know that is Salvadorian. oh okay yeah, yeah so um, yeah it was really interesting <laughs> like they're Central American and um, I had never met so many Central Americans it's it's really cool really cool um, you guys are all very close, very united. Um, you guys, you know, really help each other out and stuff. So that's really neat. Um, I was fortunate enough to have great parents also. My parents are very religious. So they, I grew up in a religious background, Christian. Okay. Christian is my religion. So I still, obviously, I'm a man of faith. You know, I believe in God. I'm not perfect. But oh, that's you know, cool. That helps me for sure. Yeah. So, so who were you as a kid? Like, were you uh, was, growing up? You guys were little... I was the athlete growing up. Okay, you, know, you were an always athlete. an athlete. Yeah. My father's goal or dream was for me to become a professional soccer player. So oh, he so put me in soccer, you know, teams since I was like five years old. Oh wow! You know, so I played soccer too. Sports. Yeah, I love soccer. I didn't know that. About I just you. didn't fall in love with soccer because I hated all the running. I hated all the running. I hated <laughs> and yet you're doing marathons. Now, yeah, now, now I'm doing marathons. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, that's but, cool. And then, so then, so then talk about that. So you've always had like um, a love for, you know, athleticism. Yeah, it's for sports. For sports. Sports, I okay. like sports. And, like, I and just... when did you, did you always, you know, did you always 
do sports or like were you always training? How did you? I mean, start? I grew up right across the street from the Coliseum. So, uh -huh. and my dad was a crazy soccer fan, and he loved wrestling. So he would on TV he would oh. always watch soccer games, and he'd get into it. Like he'd be screaming at the TV. So, oh wow! I mean, I, I like that. You know, seeing yeah. my dad happy and yeah. And so I, I mean, I grew. I grew love for sports oh, that's cool. by seeing my dad, how much he loves sports. You know? That's cool. And then he pushed me, like I said, he would take me to the dock, I mean, to the, to the park. Mm -hmm. We'd play soccer, we'd play baseball, and we'd come with, you know, bring Lester, Oscar, there was a bunch of us. We like the whole li little rascal gang, you know? Oh, that's <laughs> so nice. That's cool. And then, so then fast forward to, um, you know, you be being a little bit older, when yeah. did you really start? Um, you know, looking into like fitness as a career, or how did it happen? Well, I, I, how can I put this? I, fitness wasn't, I didn't think I was gonna be a trainer. Okay. You know, um, in high school or out of college, I, I didn't think I was gonna be a trainer. You had regular jobs? Yeah, I've had regular jobs. I've had all kinds of jobs, like Sears, uh, El Capitan Theater, like, just just a few jobs. I've always had an entrepreneur mind and I've uh -huh. always wanted to do more. Um, did so, you did your parents get that instilled in your head, do you think? Like to be your own boss? I mean, my, not really. My parents were very hard working, nine to five um, parents. People. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I saw pictures of my father like uh, posting like news articles about like big money things and like, uh, like I feel like my people. dad had a dreams of having more. Okay. Know? So I don't know, I feel like maybe that carried on to me. Yeah. Because growing up, like... I, I it's mean, almost like a vision board for him, like, oh, like he yeah, liked... Like, yeah, and he would, he would always instill that. I gotta work hard, don't be lazy. You know, don't let nobody put you down. Go for what you want, you know? Right. Okay. And then, um, so at what age did, you know, or when did training really come about as a career for you? So, I mean, that, that brings us to a, another sh big story. So. I was in real estate prior to, to right. fitness, and you know that. You know, mm -hmm. I did real estate from 2003 to 2007, mm -hmm. and yeah, you were actually when I was first starting to get into real estate. Um, we had a lot of talks where you would yeah. talk to me yeah, about yeah. real when estate. I first and, training you, yeah. yeah, and you were like, "Do it, Monica. It's so good, mm -hmm. and you'd be great at it." And you know, you helped kind of push me to actually pursuing it, it too, yeah. Nice. that's yeah. awesome. Cause you, I, I really loved your stories about it. it was, yeah, I, um, like, I was very successful, I made a lot of money and... Talk about some of those times, cause I know you had, you know, like you had the world at your I fingertips. Mean, yeah, I, like I said, I was very successful, like... You were driving around. Driving and, around, I had like mm -hmm. six cars, you know, like a couple apartments, a couple condos in Brentwood. I mean, I got to the point where I was like doing development deals with brokers and um, doing those flips that everyone's mm -hmm. doing nowadays. Um, but I didn't pay taxes like for five years of my entire real estate career. And like the fifth year of my career, like in 2006, when the market crashed, mm -hmm. the IRS audited me and I got in, a, I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. I, I got sentenced for uh, tax evasion and I ended up doing 18 months in a state prison. Jeez. So me doing that time in state prison, it gave me a lot of time to think and reflect on how I was living my life, you know? Because because I was so successful, because I was making so much money in real estate, you know, you, you close a deal, you can make 50 grand, you can right. make 100 grand, right. 200, you know? And I was making big money, big checks like that at one, t at one shot. That's a lot of money for yeah. someone from South Central who grew up having nothing to to have that type of money, you know? And I was like 20, 26, 25, 27 at the time. Oh my gosh. So I was just living very fast and not, and not thinking twice about like the decisions I was making, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I got audited and got into that, in that mess, like it really slowed me down. I feel like it was God telling me to like, you need to slow down, you know? It was like a little punishment. Yeah. And and while I was in there, like, when I went into prison, I was 200 pounds. I had, I had, cause no, I, I was you a, weren't. Yeah, cause during the, me fighting this case, I was in a very dark time and I, I stopped working out. Uh, I, I was low key a little bit depressed, you know? So I gained all this weight, I was eating bad. I had a relationship that went bad. 
And uh, yeah, I was about 200 pounds when, wow. I, when I went into prison. I can't even picture that. I haven't even yeah. seen pictures. I, you have. I've posted a, you a, a throwback on my Instagram. It was probably like all muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had big cheeks. Had big oh, belly. you know what? Yeah, but yeah. you always wore the baggy yeah, shirts. Yeah, I had yeah. the baggy uh-huh. shirt. Well, I had my real estate long sleeves yeah. and slacks. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, so and during those 18 months, I got in the best shape of my life. Like, really? Yeah. And while you were in prison? While I was in prison, yes. Um, since I don't, I didn't have any priors, I'm not a criminal or anything like that, I qualified for a program called Fire Camp. Okay. So I was actually a firefighter for nine months of, oh. of my 18 month sentence. Like you actually got to go and like fight was, fires? Yeah, a cow fire, like oh, forest wow. fires. Yeah. So that allowed me to have like access to a library, I had access to books, I read like over 30 books, a oh, lot wow. of them on health and nutrition. And, and then that ex- inspired me to, to become a trainer. Like I had a vision, once, like I, when I was about 120 days to, come, to coming home, I told myself that when I go home, that's what I wanna do. I wanna help people get in the best shape of their lives. Cause yeah. it just, it's, it feels amazing. Yeah. And I just felt like that would be a great way for me to pursue a new career. Right, know? and I know, when, I know when you start working out, especially when you, um, you take it on and you know, you, you work your hardest at it, you feel really, really good. Do you think that because you were in prison, for, uh, for someone else that has never been to prison, you know, they might, especially like someone that's not a criminal, that's not used to being in the system, um, it can kind of backfire and put you in this depressed state and kind of just, you know, you leave there with just thinking like, I have nothing left, I have a, right. a, a, a this on my record, right. like what, right. where do I, what do I do? But when you work out, you know, you have endorphins pumping, like do you, that must have kept you sane while you were in there, right? right. Like you just, no, like that, your, it was definitely. mental. But it, it starts with your mindset. Like right. I didn't allow myself to get depressed. I didn't allow myself to get into that dark place if anything like I really dug deep and it just told myself look once I knew that I had a date to come back home I was like look this is just temporary I'm gonna work as hard as I can while I'm here Mm -hmm. so that when I come home I'm prepared you know for the future yeah you know so uh, I mean so what was what was the first step like you get out and then what uh so look when I got out um, I immediately scheduled like a photo shoot okay. like, to take pictures of myself because I was in pretty good, you know, physique. Okay. I was pretty ripped, so I did a photo shoot. Um, before I started uh, my brand Flex, the name of my business was MVT, was My Virtual Trainers. Okay. Because my idea was to, to do like an online uh, fitness business, you know, so I can reach more people. Um, but it evolved to become flex. Okay. You know, so, but yeah, going back to my first step was doing a photo shoot. When I did that photo shoot, I got business cards. Once I got business cards, I just started talking to people and started training people like at Runyon Canyon, at Mm -hmm. parks. I'd go to LA, I got a LA fitness membership and even though I wasn't supposed to, I started working out people at LA LA fitness because I was a LA fitness trainer. And this was before I got certified too. Okay. So I was just, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew how to get in shape. I knew how to work out, so. So right away you were able to find clients? Not right away, but I mean, here and there. Yeah, they came here and there, but I mean, I was only charging like 20 bucks a session, you know, 25 bucks a session. Yeah. How long long was it that after you got out of prison that you and I met, do you think? Um, So this, so I I met you in April 2011. Okay, so I met you like 2012-ish. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so you like weren't year, out very long. A year or two later. Because you started training me. Um, you were living at the Mendes. Yeah, Mendocino. you started training me, and I was paying you at the time 50 bucks. 50 bucks, yeah. I, 50 bucks 50 every two 40, weeks? 40, something like that. 40 or 50. 50 every know. two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. So it was $100 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Which now is probably like <laughs> unheard of. Yeah, hundred bucks a session now, Mr. Celebrity Trainer. Um, but I was working out. Um, so this is a year after you got out of prison that we met. You started training me, and um, how did we meet? Through Lester. 
Oh, through Lester. You were already dating him? Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah we met through him. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, around 2012, well, we were friends around 2012 and then dated 2012, 2013. But I met you through him. And then um, I, I trained with you th four times a week, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Four mm -hmm. times a week, he would come to me and literally was in the best shape of my life. <laughs> um, Mario was amazing. It was a, a partner and I, we would, um, Leslie, Leslie and I. Yeah, he, we, um, he would come and train us both. So it was really cool because we would motivate each other. And um, Leslie and I would motivate each other. And then um, Mario was training us and just really put me in the best shape I have ever been. I trained with you for years. Mm -hmm. For years. Yeah, I mean, year. now, now I haven't, um, I haven't tough. had anyone to train because my schedule is crazy and your yeah. schedule is crazy. You now have two kids. Yeah, <laughs> two kids later. But I was in the most amazing shape of my life. Um, you know, my legs, my butt, everything <laughs> was amazing. Yeah. Um, and and then you've just evolved. Like it was just kind of a spiral effect, right? It's just being consistent, being consistent, yeah. sticking, <laughs> sticking to what you know. I, I think it's like I love working out and I love being around people and helping them and seeing them seeing them evolve. Right. That that's like the most rewarding thing. You know, yeah. When you start with someone and and they can't do a push up or they can't do yeah. a squat correctly. Yeah. And then in a few weeks you just see them evolve and change. You know? Yeah. And it's not only their physical; it's also their mental. Their, that they come yeah. in a little more happier, a little more energy. More confident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I started with you actually. Um, my posture was bad, and I remember, like, looking back at pictures when I was in the best shape, I was like, wow, my posture is so good. And now I think <laughs> it's bad again, but I remember just, I don't know if it's, like, confidence slash, like, my bad posture, but it was just, it went from, like, this to, yeah. like, hey, it's look at me. It's look at my legs. <laughs> I think it definitely um, brings confidence out. Yeah, too. yeah. When you're in good shape, when you feel good about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you and walk you, a little different. You yeah, know? you do. You have a little pep to your step. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, your, your your training abilities are amazing. And then you know, so how did you get into celebrity training? Um, well, I met Karuchi was my first like celebrity that I started working with, and I met Karuchi on a random Sunday. You know, working out. I was working out. I was doing stairs. Um, in Beachwood Canyon, you know, be I don't know if you know where Beachwood Canyon is mm -hmm. in Hollywood. You have to be a real local to find those stairs. Okay. But I was just, you know, I was locked in. I had my headset in. I was doing stairs. I was sweating. I had my shirt off. And I saw Karuchi. I recognized her. I knew who she was. And she was with uh, Chris Brown's uh, stylist, EJ King. Okay. It's like one of her best friends. They were there together. Um, but I... I was focused on my workout, so I didn't really pay them no mind, to be honest. Like, I was just working out, working out, you know, doing my stairs. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw Karuchi just at the bottom looking like she was in pain. She was, like, stretching and, and looked like she was in pain, like she had discomfort. So then I just decided to spark conversation and say, ask her if she was okay. And she let, told me that her hamstring was tight, so I showed her a few stretches, and, and I guess it made her feel better. And she started doing the stairs herself, but still didn't have any conversation about training. Okay. So I just continued doing my workout. When I was just about done, I was taking a breather at the top of the stairs. And when I was taking a breather, they both came up, EJ and Karuchi. And then that's when we started a conversation. I think EJ asked me if I was a trainer. And I was like, yes, I'm a trainer. And then... So they approached you? Yeah. After the whole... After the whole like, me meeting her and talking yeah. to her, yeah. So when EJ asked me, I said, yes, I'm a trainer. And then that's when I took the opportunity and asked Karuchi if she had a trainer. And she said no. So I said, awesome. I, I told her that I train at a private gym. And I told her, I said, come train with me and I'll give you 30 days of free training. You know, just, just come train with me. Uh -huh. and, and she took my number and I didn't hear from her for a month. Oh. So I was like, damn, I was all disappointed. I was like, man, <laughs> Sorry. you know? But then on a random Sunday, I got a text. Hey, it's Karuchi. Can I come in today? Nice. Uh, and I, and I, I was just getting up out of bed, and I'm like, what? I was like, man, somebody's playing with me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And then, sure enough, she. I mean, she, I said, okay. I got dressed really fast. I said, come, come at ten, and she... that was it. Yeah, she came, 
we had our workout. She loved it, and, and she's been training with me since. Nice. Right now, she's actually on set, though, in New Orleans for her TV show, Claws. Yeah. I think it's going on her third season, maybe. Or, yeah. Yeah. Third or so. Yeah, third season. Yeah, I've, no I've noticed a change in her, yeah. in her body, too. She yeah, looks amazing. she's definitely fit. Her now. legs are her amazing. Legs. <laughs> I've made a lot of gains. Yeah. Because that's the area she wants to work on, her legs, butt, yeah. and abs. Yeah. yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, what other, so since then, you know, what, what else has... I mean, since, so since Karuchi... What other... Um, and people saw her results, and then she has lots of friends, so she referred friends. I had friends of her start reaching out to me, like, in my, on my Instagram, DMing me. The first one to reach out was uh, Nicole Williams. Okay. She was on WAGS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her. Yeah, she's great. She's awesome. <laughs> and then, we have the, we have um, the same, like, heart... You know, she has her own uh, bikini Problem. line, Yeah, too. she has a bikini line, yeah. Yeah, Nia, Nia Lynn, I think, Yeah. Nia Lynn collection. Yeah, I love her. And then, so Nicole brought Shanina, Shanina Shaik. She's a Victoria's Secret model. Oh, okay. Started working with her, and I mean, I worked with a DB that played for the Rams, Troy Hill. Um, Hayes, I, right? Hmm? You worked Hayes, with Hayes? Yeah, he, Hayes. He plays Puller. for... He plays uh, for the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah, and... and and a lot of people like behind the scenes in Hollywood, you know. I can't really name too many. Some of those people they like to keep their privacy. Okay. So we won't name them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. So, um, you know, what what else are you doing other than just um, training Personal celebrities training. and and well, you're doing a lot of also a lot of Insta models, right? Insta models, yeah. A lot of Instagram models. <laughs> Yeah. That must be fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I know you have other things going on. Um, what else do you do? So I created a brand named Flex. Uh-huh. Okay, and I'm wearing the shirt right here. It's Flex. Um, I brought you a gift, too. Brought you some resistant cool. bands. Yay! So you can I hate these, but I love right. these. <laughs> yeah. These, we have a love-hate relationship, you guys. These are um, Flex Bands. Resistant bands, they're great for your leg exercises, for your booty, for your calves, your quads. Yeah, these are really, really cool. These are um, really good quality, you travel too. with them, you know, do workouts at home. Yeah, yeah, so you put them on, put them over, like, your knees yeah. or under, and then, like, do squats. I mean, all, all kinds, all of, kinds stuff. of stuff. Um, especially when you don't have weights. I mean, yeah. these really... So I'm also going to put you on my online platform that I have. That's what, uh, what I was leading to. So I, I created Flex. Um, for me, Flex is like a lifestyle brand. Okay. It's, it's, it's about fitness. It's about nutrition. It's about keeping people motivated, inspired, and, and giving people direction in the gym or in just in fitness in general, you know, okay. how, to, how to keep up with a healthy lifestyle. So my platform, it allows me to have clients all over the world and I'm able to customize workouts for them. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's all through an app and through a desktop if you don't have, um, I mean, everyone has a smartphone now. Yeah. So. So then I can, so. <laughs> but I'm gonna give you 30 days for you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put thanks. you on there, yep. So, so. I can, um, basically you'll, based on what I tell you, I wanna work, I work on, I wanna work on, on my your, legs and my butt. Yeah, I'll customize a workout. For, for me, goals, yeah. and then I just go at whatever time I can to the gym, mm -hmm. and I'm able to look at the workout. Yeah. And what, so, what is this? Is it verbal or? It, it has video instructions. Shows you. Oh, it's video. It's video. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's cool. There's video. It has a place where I can put notes, like oh. so you can you can see the video, and then you can see my notes to see if you're gonna do a superset or how many reps. Okay. How long of a break you need to take. It's it's pretty it's pretty great. Can yeah. I write back on it? You or? can write back on it. Give me feedback. I'll get it. Okay. I won't respond immediately, but, right. <laughs> but, but I'll get back. But to that's you. how you train, yeah. and and you know, like who's doing this? Are people all kinds of people like all around the world? Or I mean, yeah, I have clients in Germany. I have clients in Australia. Oh my I have gosh, that's awesome. In France. I have clients in. Are Zealand. they able to get your bands? Yeah, they, I, I ship international. I mean, it costs. so you can buy them on that. On buy them at flex60.com. P L E. Yeah, P uh, P H L E X X six zero dot com. Okay. Yeah, you can purchase the bands there, and then you can purchase the online program there, and yeah. And that's and just really a way up. to get. And your it's only forty dollars a month. It's a subscription oh, based. Oh wow! Yeah. If you don't want to be a subscriber, you can pay for one month, and it's fifty dollars per month. Okay. Yeah. But if you subscribe, it's only forty dollars a month. So that's really cool. That's like having you, but. 
right. virtually. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm still customizing the workouts. Yeah, you're just not, just you know, not in their face. There. Yeah. yeah, but oh, I'm still cool. communicating with them. Right, you know, that's a really good deal. To get that's my a feedback. Yeah, so. that's a really good deal. So definitely, do you have? Um, okay, so that's the website flex flex sixty dot com. Yeah. Yeah. When they purchase it on there, I'll, I'll email people and give them instructions of how to get on the platform. Okay. Because I'm working on customizing the app, but I don't have the app available in the app store yet. Okay. But when you go to my website and you purchase the program, I'll give you instructions on how do you get, you know, access to the app that I do have. Oh, okay, but so you do through it to you through do a third party. You do it through an app, but mm -hmm. once you're a customer, then they can pull it up on yes, their app, right? Yes, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That makes sense. Exactly. Oh, that seems pretty easy. And and I did it so that I mean so I'll be able to reach a lot more people. Right. You know, because doing one-on-one -on -one training, there's only so many people you can train in a week. Right. You know, or in a day. And your results are really good. So you actually know what you're talking about. I mean, you live the lifestyle. Yeah. You, this, I, like you wake up at crazy hours, you oh, go running, man, you just days. did a marathon. I, I so that's another marathon. thing that you're doing lately. Yeah, um, you've been running. <laughs> yeah. So it was like two weeks ago? Yeah, March 24th. Yeah. You ran yeah. you ran the marathon? I finished in three hours and 37 minutes. I ran last year and I was trying to beat my time and I didn't beat it because I didn't train as hard this year because I, okay. I got a little cocky. <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy. I just figured I didn't, I mean, I didn't need to train as hard. Yeah. But I mean, I still did good. I only finished seven minutes slower than last year. Oh, that's nothing. So yeah. as you see, consistency really is key because if you yeah. stay consistent, I mean, you're able to do what, yeah. you, what you normally do, you know, it's, that was easy for me. Do you ever, like, take cheat days? Oh, yeah. I just got back from Mexico, and <laughs> it was uh, four days of, <laughs> of cheating, and I feel it right now. Yeah. Did you work but, out while you were out there? Um, no. That's a first? I did, I did not. Yeah, I thought about it. It crossed my mind, but then... Because even I needed, when we I went... Needed, I really needed the time off, to be honest. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, that's and, good. And I feel a lot better today, so... That's good. I, I ran as soon as I got back yesterday, so I ran like four miles last night and did three miles this morning. So oh my gosh, you're making I'll be, up. I'll be back on track. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that your, you know, your fitness, um, you physically going out and doing workouts to work out on yourself, not working out other people, but do you think um, you working out yourself, is that like a type of meditation for you? Like, does that keep it, you your mind? Def it's definitely therapeutic, yeah. Yeah. Like, for me, running is very therapeutic too. Like really? I told you earlier, I, I didn't fall in love with soccer because I hated running so much uh -huh. as a kid. But now I really feel like it's very therapeutic because I just go out there, listen to my music, or sometimes I don't even listen to music, or sometimes I'll put on a podcast. Yeah. You know, something like personal growth mm -hmm. you know, or business, anything that, that'll help me learn and get better. Yeah. I'll just listen to that. But when you're out there running, it's like you're not thinking about anything else. You're not taking texts. You're not, you know, you're not surfing the gram while you're running. I mean, even though sometimes I do post while I'm running, but that's all. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's you know? yeah, because you so, like to motivate others, yeah. and then also I'm sure it's like accountability for yourself mm -hmm. and saying like, hey, I'm I'm doing it, and yep. again inspiring others. Oh, that's really cool, Mario. Yep. Um, so what can we see in the future from you? Um. I mean, obviously, I want to continue doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm definitely looking to have my own studio in the future, hopefully this year. And that'll lead to multiple studios. You know, I just want to have like a, a, a dope facility for fitness, for nutrition, yeah. for wellness, even, even coaching, to be honest, like for young kids or, or young people who want to become trainers. You know? Okay. So... That's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Well, thank you, Mario. Um, go ahead and let everybody know where they can reach you. Uh, you could get me on Instagram at Mr. MVT Fit. That's M R M V T Fit. And also at Flex60 on Instagram. Okay. Um, you can go to the website at flex60.com. And on YouTube, which I'm going to be posting this podcast plus many more, at uh, Flex60 YouTube. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you, Mario. And Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So you guys, like, like I said, this is for motivation and inspiration. Mario was doing something completely different. He was in real estate. He was 200 pounds <laughs> um, and went to jail. That's you know, went to prison. Prison. Yeah. Prison. It went to jail. Prison. Went to prison. It's and, never too late, guys. It's yeah, never. It's and, never and, too late. And look at him. He is a celebrity trainer. You know, training A-list celebrities. 
um, and really fulfilling a dream that, you know, at one point he didn't even think he had. And he, you actually didn't, this dream didn't happen until you went to prison. Mm. So you can turn any negative, anything negative into something positive. You just have to believe in yourself and, you know, not never quit because as you heard, Mario, um, the first couple years weren't easy. I mean, he was doing trainings for <laughs> 50 bucks. bucks, 50 <laughs> bucks for two weeks, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it was the consistency, the results that people were getting from him that ultimately led him to where he is now, um, an amazing trainer, you you see the results, I mean, you he, he's, you're a walking billboard for your brand, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you're, mus you're all muscle, you're in great shape, um, so I wish you nothing but success. And I know you're going to succeed because you Thank just you. have that mentality. Like you don't let anything bring you down. Um, you're surrounded by positive people. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, you know, to seeing you keep evolving. I'm looking forward to you coming to my gym opening yes. in the future. Oh, of course. Yes. And you're going to come to my real estate of opening. Of course, of course. <laughs> So thank you guys. Thanks for watching and listening. And you can uh, get all the information on my show in the descriptions. Just look down and click. And you can also get Mario's uh, information. It'll be in the description as well. And uh, once again, thanks for listening or watching to I Am Becoming by Monica Singer. See you guys next time.